So, hopefully by now you've established your Twitter advertising goals. Now it's time to create a campaign. And the first step is deciding on a campaign type. There are six types of Twitter ad campaigns, also referred to as objectives. These include website traffic ads, Twitter following ads, tweet engagement ads, video view ads, brand awareness ads, and app installs. Depending on your goals, you might end up using just one, a few, or even all of these ad types at some point. We'll take a closer look at each ad type right now. First, one of the most common Twitter ad types is website clicks or website traffic. This is more or less exactly what it sounds like. Use this ad type to send traffic from Twitter to your website, a squeeze page, sales page, e-commerce store, or a piece of content like a blog post or article. For your ad creative, you can use either a website card or other media, or even just a textual tweet. Ideally, you'll want to include a very clear call to action in your ad to encourage people to not only click, but also to follow through with certain actions on your website or page. With website clicks, you're setting your bidding and budget in accordance with how many clicks you get to your website. Any other benefits you gain from, from this ad, such as followers, retweets, likes, and so on, are completely free. Website click ads work great when combined with conversion tracking. Simply place your Twitter website tag, which is the name Twitter uses for their tracking pixels, on the appropriate page for the type of action you're tracking. For example, if you're collecting leads, place your code on the thank you page. The number of people tracked as arriving on that page tells you how many people filled out your lead form. We'll discuss more about conversion tracking and analysis later. For now, just know it's a good idea to have a website tag on as many of your pages as possible so you can make use of that information later on. Next, there's tweet engagement ads. Tweet engagement campaigns are an excellent way to boost your reach and the number of people interacting with and sharing your content. You can either create an ad creative for this purpose, or you can choose to use an existing organic tweet. Basically, a tweet engagement ad campaign promotes these tweets to a bigger, targeted audience that you otherwise wouldn't reach organically. Rather than painstakingly try to organically network your way in front of the perfect audience on Twitter, you can have any tweet appear in front of your ideal target audience right there in their Twitter news feeds. These tweets look and behave exactly like normal tweets, except that they have a small label on them that says promoted. This native look and feel really helps increase the amount of engagements you can expect to receive. In the case of tweet engagement campaigns, you're basically paying Twitter for every time a person interacts with your tweet in any way. This includes retweets, replies, likes, and pretty much any other interaction a person may have with your promoted tweet. Next, there's the increase followers campaign type. Twitter followers can be super valuable for your business. Unlike Facebook, where the percentage of your followers who see your organic posts is very small, with Twitter, your followers can pretty much be expected to see all your tweets. For that reason alone, the increased followers ad type can be very beneficial. Customers who follow you on Twitter are much more likely to become customers and advocates of your brand. According to Twitter's own research, 75% of consumers feel better about small and medium-sized businesses after following them on Twitter, and 69% have purchased from a business because of Twitter content once or more. This campaign promotes your actual Twitter account rather than the individual tweets to a target audience that you think might be interested in your brand. It does so by featuring your account in places like the Who to Follow panel and their home timeline. In this case, you'll be paying Twitter based on instances of people choosing to follow you. This can be an easy and relatively inexpensive way to accelerate your follower growth and significantly boost your organic reach. Next, there's brand awareness ads. Awareness campaigns can be incredibly helpful in getting your brand name or identity in front of as many eyeballs as possible and ultimately drive better awareness for your business. This can be especially useful when you're a newer brand and you're looking for a quick boost in name recognition within your target market, niche, or industry. The ad in this case can be any typical promoted tweet, meaning text only or text and media. But the real difference is in what you're paying for. Rather than paying for specific actions taken by users on your tweets, you're paying for impressions. An impression is any time a tweet is made visible in someone's newsfeed. The great thing about this model is that impressions are dirt cheap. 1,000 impressions will typically cost you anywhere from a few dollars to $12, depending on things like targeting. The downside is that impressions come and go very quickly and don't necessarily produce direct ROI or results. A person could literally scroll or swipe past your tweet, barely noticing it, and that would count as one impression. If your goal is to get your brand in front of as many people as possible in a short amount of time, then this would be fine, because people would at least be getting exposed to your logo or image, even if they're not stopping to learn more. Just don't expect a ton of engagements or clicks from these tweets, although you'll get a little bit and it doesn't cost you extra. After that, there's video views, also known as promoted video. Video view ads are exactly what they sound like. 
You're exposing your video to as much of your target audience as possible and paying Twitter for each time a person watches that video. This is very powerful because videos on Twitter are shown to drive the highest recall and emotional connection of any digital platform, according to business.twitter.com. Another recent addition that makes this advertising tool even more powerful is the autoplay feature, which causes your video ad to automatically start playing with no sound as users scroll past it in their timelines. This dramatically boosts interactions and views. Now, since you're lining Twitter's pockets, they allow you more freedom with videos than organic video tweets. File size can be huge, but they recommend you keep it under one gigabyte. Maximum length is typically two minutes and 20 seconds, but you're allowed to ask them directly for up to 10 minutes and they might approve you for that. Frame rate should be 29.97 or higher, and videos ideally should be at least 720p resolution or higher for that nice crisp look. Keep in mind, they're trying to keep Twitter timelines pretty. Twitter recommends you have a good CTA or call to action in the textual part of your tweet, namely a CTA explaining why they should watch your video. This will encourage people to stop as they're swiping or scrolling by and actually take time to view. They also recommend you get the meat and potatoes of your message out clearly in the first 15 seconds and keep the rest of your message short and sweet. Now a quick warning here. Twitter considers any instance of autoplay in the timeline at 50% view lasting 2 seconds or more to be a chargeable video view. This isn't terrible, and in fact most platforms are starting to lean towards this form of charging. But it's important to know because it means you'll be paying even if people don't unmute or click to enlarge your video. This shouldn't discourage you, but just be aware of it when you're establishing your budget and your bidding. Last but not least, there's app installs and app re-engagement. This is a very powerful feature of Twitter advertising. This only applies to you if you have a mobile app of some sort, and if you do, you can create a promoted tweet that actually connects to your app on the App Store and pay Twitter for each time a person installs your app on their device. Beyond that, if you're looking to get more people to open that app later on, you can create Twitter ads that cause the app to open up on their device. This can be a great way to keep your mobile audience thinking about your brand or engaging with your software or content. You can choose to pay Twitter for clicks to install or for actually completed installations. And of course, you can pay them for clicks to open the app in the case of the app re-engagement ads. So now that you've got a handle on creating Twitter ads, how do you ensure they're performing as well as they could and how do you capitalize on that traffic you just paid good money for? That's what we'll be covering in the next section. One reason a lot of independent advertisers give up on Twitter ads is because their first experience is underwhelming. Somewhere inside, maybe unconsciously, they were expecting their first campaign to make them millionaires overnight. And when that doesn't happen, they give up. This is a huge mistake. Twitter ads can work wonders for your business. The trick is to analyze, optimize, and retarget. First, let's talk about analysis and stats. Twitter has an awesome analytics dashboard and plenty of useful data to help you track and analyze the performance of your ad campaigns. From your Twitter advertising dashboard, you can see things like impressions, engagements, views, clicks, conversion rates, and maybe most importantly, costs. When you compare all this data against your ad creative, the bidding strategy, and audience targeting, you should have a pretty good idea of your ad's performance. Once you've taken a good look at your performance, it's time to optimize. The idea behind optimizing your Twitter ad campaign is to basically tweak various aspects of it, test the results of those tweaks against the baseline, for example, the original campaign, and watch what happens. If the tweak produced an improvement, keep it. That tweaked version now becomes the new norm, and it's time to choose another aspect or element to tweak. For example, let's say you've got an ad campaign for firefighter-themed t-shirt sales designed to direct traffic to your e-commerce store. You've got an image in your tweet of a firefighter silhouetted in front of some scary flames and a textual CTA saying, free firefighter t-shirts. The ad is performing worse than you had hoped. For your first attempt at optimization, you might change the call to action and make it a little more wordy. For example, grab your free firefighter t-shirt and celebrate our nation's first responders. After implementing that tweak, you notice that your click-through rates increase and your cost per click goes down a little. That just became your new baseline. Next, you remove the dark silhouette image and replace it with a bright, flat tabletop background with one of your firefighter t-shirts spread out on it. Big surprise, your performance improves. The big thing to keep in mind for this process is that you only want to make one change at a time. This can be done all within the same ad, but it would be best to simply discontinue the baseline one and then make tweets to successive cloned versions so you retain each version and can look back and analyze the differences. Also, make sure you don't rush to judgment on each variation. 
You want to have at least 25 to 50 conversions or actions, and I mean at least, before you give a final thumbs up or down to each tweak or variation. Once you've tweaked your ads to perfection, you want to move on to optimizing your funnel and capitalizing on your traffic, which brings us to the tracking pixel or website tag. So the first step to tracking and capitalizing on your traffic is to install your website tag code, which is a thing everyone else in the world calls a tracking pixel. You can get this from inside your ad account, and we recommend you use the universal website tag option. Place this tag on every relevant page of your website. This should include your squeeze pages, your thank you pages, your sales pages, your checkout pages and order forms, your upsell pages, and pretty much every page in your funnel. You should also put this in your members area welcome page. This way, you'll be able to track and analyze the way your traffic flows through your whole customer experience and where in the funnel your customers are stopping. This way, you can tweak the pages in question to try to improve their conversion rates. Now let's talk about retargeting audiences. Once you've got your pixel or tag code where you need it, it's time to start retargeting. Retargeting is done by creating custom audiences based on user behavior across your pages. The most basic form of retargeting is to simply retarget everyone who has visited your web property. In this case, all you care about is that the audience is warm, which means they've now been exposed to your brand or site and are at least somewhat familiar with you, and therefore more likely to convert if you target all of them and send them to another offer, or the same offer again. A more advanced form of retargeting, however, is action-based retargeting. In this case, you create a custom audience based on pages someone visited or didn't visit, and then you custom tailor an ad message to them. One example might be for people who did land on your squeeze page, but did not land on your thank you page. You know these are people who didn't grab your free gift or opt-in, so you can retarget them reminding them to grab that free offer and why they'll like it. Another example might be upsell reminders. In this case, you'd create a custom audience of people who landed on your upsell page, meaning they bought the initial front-end product, but did not land on the next page after the upsell, whether that be a thanks page or another upsell page. This means you can follow them around Twitter with a tailored message inviting them to upgrade or offering a coupon. This same method can be applied to the e-commerce realm simply by placing your code on your order page and also on the post-purchase or success page and targeting those who hit the former but not the latter. This is commonly referred to as shopping cart abandoner recovery. So there you have it, a clear strategy for leveraging paid ads on Twitter. But none of it will count for anything if you don't apply what you've learned. Make sure either you or your team start implementing what you've learned right away using the battle plan below. Step one, establish your big picture Twitter advertising goals and ensure they're specific, measurable, and attainable. Step two, choose an appropriate ad type or objective. Step three, make your targeting and budget decisions for your first ad in accordance with the goals you established at the beginning. Step four, design an ad creative that's eye-catching and engaging. Step five, Analyze your performance after getting at least around 25 to 50 conversions. Step 6. Start tweaking and optimizing your campaign to boost performance.